In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of how long-term disability works in British Columbia. I've broken this uh, down into three parts, and they are as follows. Part number one is going to be a background information about long-term disability. In part two, I'm going to talk about the sources and types of disability benefits available in British Columbia. And third, I'm, in part three, I'll take you through how to go about getting long-term disability benefits through one of these programs. So the purpose of this video is afterwards, you'll have a, a basic understanding of what long-term disability is, the types of benefits that are available, and how you can go about applying for benefits today. Let's start with some basics. In this section, I'm gonna cover what is long-term disability, how does it work, what medical conditions qualify for long-term disability, and finally, I'll talk a bit about own occupation versus any occupation. That's a concept you're gonna see come up quite often. So first of all, what is long-term disability? Long-term disability is a financial benefit paid to people who become unable to work because of a disability, medical condition, or illness. These benefits are usually paid monthly and cover somewhere between 60 to up to 90% of your pre-disability income. These benefits usually will go to age 65 and they're typically gonna be paid by an insurance company, an employer, or a government program. So how does the long-term disability work? In the most general sense, it involves you making an application to a program or insurance plan that has the, that provides the long-term disability. You have to show that, you, that you're eligible to apply to that plan or program, and then that plan or program will review your application and decide whether to approve your claim or deny it. If your claim gets denied, you have options of appealing and such like that, but it all follows the same type of process where you have to get paperwork, fill out to make an application or claim, and then have the program or insurance company decide whether to approve it. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So any medical condition can qualify for long-term disability. The focus is always going to be on the impairment that arises from the medical condition rather than the condition itself. So the seriousness of the condition is not as important as the seriousness of the impairments or disability that arises from the medical condition. For example, multiple sclerosis is often seen as a very serious diagnosis for someone to get, but as, as if you may know someone with who's had multiple sclerosis, for many years, someone with that diagnosis may be able to continue working and their disability and impairments may not be severe on a permanent basis. However, there could be a point where they do become permanently impaired from the symptoms. So you can see there's a, there's a shift here where they will, insurance companies and, and government programs will look at what phase you're at in this medical condition and whether your impairments at this time are totally disabling. Now, last but not least, for our background here, I wanna talk a bit about own occupation versus any occupation. This is an important concept. Most long-term disability benefits are going to be paid if you're not able to do any work. So that means you need to be able to show that your disability is at a level of severity where you're not able to do any type of work uh, reasonably suited to you based on your education, um, your abilities, and this kind of thing. Now, with some plans, especially insurance plans, there can be a period of time or a long period of time where they will cover you if you're not able to do just simply your own occupation. That's a little more narrow, and often sometimes people won't be able to do their own occupation, but they might be able to do other occupations. Some plans will cover you as long as you can't do your own occupation, and again, that can be for a period of uh, two years with a lot of plans, or if it's a uh, individual insurance policy, it could be to age 65. So, Take a careful look at your insurance plan or program to figure out, are they looking for me being able to do my own job or is it going to be, am I gonna to have to prove that I'm able to do any job? Let's now turn to part two. There are three sources of long-term disability benefits in British Columbia. They are, number one, disability insurance companies. They're one of the most common sources of disability benefits. Number two is going to be actually the province of British Columbia itself. And number three is gonna be the federal government, Government of Canada providing benefits. Let's look at all three of these right now. Let's start with insurance companies. So with insurance companies, there are, they issue, like there are insurance companies that focus on life and disability insurance policies, and they will issue three types of policies to people uh, that cover people. Number one are gonna be individual insurance policies. We've got group policies and special purpose policies. Let's go through all these right now. 
So with individual policies, these are ones where you have to pay for them yourself, buy them directly from a broker, they only cover you, and they will cover you for your own occupation, sometimes any occupation. These can be some of the best policies out there, sometimes they can be some of the worst, uh, but often they'll be pretty good. So once you have, if you have this type of policy, then you would uh, apply through the insurance company to get benefits, you get a monthly income payment, usually to age 65, but read the policy because it can be all over the place. The second one here are group long-term disability policies. These are the most common, and these type of long-term dis this type of long-term disability will be included in a group benefits that are often part of a larger group benefit package available through workplaces. So if you have medical benefits through your work um, or dental, that kind of thing, you should check to see if it also includes long-term disability because there's a good chance that it will. Now with these types of plans, they'll usually cover you 65 to 85% uh, of your income if you become unable to work. They usually will pay to age 65 and they usually have a two-step where they will cover you for two years or three years if you can't do your own occupation. And then after that, they will only cover you if you show that you can't do any other type of occupation. All right, now last but not least, we have these special purpose plans. That's kind of a catch-all name. This covers a group of insurance products that are not really long-term disability, but they still kind of fit in the same kind of world here. So first, let's run through them quickly. You have creditor's insurance. This will be disability benefits attached to mortgages and loans that you may have paid for when you got those loans. Check to see if you have it. If you qualify, it will you become disabled. They will pay the mortgage payment or the loan payment for the loan for a certain period of time. Next is critical illness. That's a special type of disability coverage where it's triggered if you suffer a listed critical illness that's in the policy, so it has to be on the list. If you suffer it though, they give you a one-time payment that's meant to help you get by in the short term. It's great coverage if you got it. It can be individual or it could be in one of your group policies. The next one is dismemberment, very similar to the uh, critical illness, except that it's focused on did you lose function of a hand, an eye, uh, some part of the body, and then you get a payout based on how severe that function, loss of function is going to be. Next, there's life insurance. Most people understand what that is. If someone passes away, money is paid out. And last but not least, travel insurance. When you travel out of country, this insurance will cover expenses that you incur or some expenses that you incur uh, while having medical care in another country. Source number two for long-term disability benefits in British Columbia is the province of, long of uh, British Columbia itself. Now there's two main sources from the province. The first is going to be workers' compensation or WorkSafe BC as it's known. The second is Disability Assistance BC, often referred to as Persons with Disability or PWD. So with Workplace BC, that covers loss of income for people who suffer a workplace accident. Has to be a workplace accident, but if it is, you can be covered up to 90% of your net uh, pre-disability income. Now, it does cover uh, up to a maximum amount. So uh, I think in 2002, it's around 108,000. So if your income exceeds 108,000, you would only be covered for as if your income was 108,000, okay? So it's kind of capped out there. You wouldn't get 90% above that, only 90% up to that level. These benefits will typically pay to age 65, but to qualify, again, you have to be working for an employer who's covered by workers' compensation and, and have a work-related injury. But if you do, they're great benefits. The second source or type of disability, sorry, the second type of disability benefit in BC is uh, benefits paid through Disability Assistance BC, commonly referred to as PWD. This pays uh, benefits to people who suffer a disability or are unable to work because of a disability. You have to meet both a disability test, so you have to have a certain level of disability as described by them, and you have to meet their financial criteria. This is the first benefit that we've talked about where there's a financial criteria that if your household income is above a certain level, you just won't qualify for this no matter how disabled you are. But if you meet all the criteria, you can get this benefit. It can cover a range of things. It covers income assistance, but it can also give supplements for children, for travel and medications and all these types of things. So it's, a, it's, a, it's there for everybody, but it, it is only for people who can meet that financial uh, criteria. Third source of benefits is the Government of Canada. Now they have a number of plans and programs here that I want to go through. The first and probably most widely known is this Canada Pension Disability. 
So under the Canada Pension Plan, you pay into this if you you can qual if you can a- apply to have disability uh, paid through the Canada Pension Plan. It doesn't hurt your eventual uh, retirement through the Canada Pension Plan to do this. It pays up to fourteen hundred a month in two thousand and two. It goes up every year at the you know based on the inflation index. Um, you have to have been a recent worker at the time when your disability happens. So it's not enough just to pay into the plan. You have to, your disability has to start. And by start, I mean like you have to stop work because of disability close in proximity to when you were a recent worker and paying into the plan. So your disability has to start. Doesn't mean you have to apply right then, but your disability had to have started kind of recent to when you were still working. Now, if you're not sure if you've had, it's not, again, it's not enough just to have paid in at some point. So check your contributions and figure out when did you have to stop work for disability and see if you have enough of a window there to, uh, to qualify for benefits. You can, it's explained on our website in more detail how to know if you meet that criteria or you can reach out to Service Canada as well. Now, the second type of benefit through the federal government, not as well known, EI sickness benefits. So everyone knows there's EI benefits, if you employment insurance benefits, if you can't work because you've lost your job, but there are EI sickness benefits available to people for short term who can't work because of a sickness. These are automatically approved if your doctor simply has to certify that you can't work. They don't look beyond that. And they can pay up to 15 weeks, uh, 50, up to 55% of your income with a certain cap threshold. And it's meant to cover a period of time shortly after when you have to stop work to allow you to recover on the short term. And then maybe you would then go on to long-term disability benefits or apply for CPP disability. Number three from the federal government is the disability tax credit. This is not technically a benefit. This is one of the few that does not get paid out month to month. It gets paid out at the end of the year. If you have paid taxes, uh, if you have taxable income and had to pay taxable, pay, pay federal taxes on your income, then you can get a rebate to a certain extent based on applying this credit. So the person with the disability would have to be approved to be certified to have the disability tax credit. They can then apply it to their own taxes if they have taxable income or to a someone who's financially supporting them and then you would get the money back at the end of the year but only if you've paid taxes and into the system, okay? All right, number, the last one. This is not a real benefit yet but I think I'll throw it in here. Uh, is the Canada Disability Benefit. This is something that's being discussed at the time of this video in 2022. So I'm not sure when you're watching this, you should check and see, has this benefit ever come into effect yet? I won't go into a detail on it because we don't know all the details yet, but, but it's the intent of it is to supplement your other benefits so that you are at least up to about $20,000 a year in income based on all your benefits. Now, there's going to be a lot of qualifications here and it won't apply for everybody. So check back on other videos and especially follow us on Facebook because we will give updates on this program. How to get long-term disability. So the first thing you need to do to get long-term disability is figure out what plans or programs you may qualify for. Then you get the application forms from those plans or programs and start filling them out and sending them in. It's good to kind of coordinate it all because that way each plan will have its own report your doctor has to fill in and it's easier to go to the doctor with all of them at the same time and have the doctor fill them out. Once you send everything into the either the plan or the government agency or the insurance company, they will assign an agent to review them and make a decision. That person will communicate the decision to you. Sometimes they'll want to interview you a little bit to get more information and they'll make a decision to approve or deny your claim. If your claim gets approved, fantastic. You do start getting monthly benefits. If you get denied, there are appeal processes for all the benefits that I've mentioned, and you would want to start that appeal process on your own or get help from lawyers or other people who may be able to help you. Um, that's pretty much it. So a lot of Don't get discouraged. A lot of people get denied early on, but you can win on appeal. All right, I'm out of breath here. That's it. You now know all the sources of disability benefits available in British Columbia. If you like this video, take a moment to subscribe, uh, like the video. It helps us out a lot and you'll stay in tune in the future when we put more videos out that may be helpful to you. And also, if you want to join or uh, hear more information from us, go to our website, resolutelegal.ca. You subscribe to our email newsletter. It's free and we have other goodies there for you as well. We'll see you all here next time.